So here we have the liver again and it's producing bile. So the liver is producing bile and the bile is going to leave the liver via the left and the right hepatic biliary ducts and they're going to join together to form the common hepatic duct. So we have the right and the left bile ducts and the common hepatic duct, the common hepatic bile duct. And of course, these are getting their bile from other smaller biliary vessels in the, in the liver tissue. Now branching off from here, we have a duct that connects the common hepatic duct with the gallbladder, like that. That duct is called the cystic duct. Cyst is a fluid filled space. So cystic is to do with the fluid filled space, space in this case, the, the bladder, the gallbladder. And after that, the bile duct becomes what's called the uh, common bile duct, the common bile duct. And that's actually going to join up with a duct from the, uh, from the pancreas further down here, the, the, the pancreatic duct in the pancreas. And that would be there. And the pancreas actually kind of goes round about this like this. So the common bile duct is actually going through the tissue of the pancreas. And this joins the duodenum. So the duodenum is curving round here like this. That means the bile can go down into the duodenum. Now when the liver is actually producing the bile, it actually goes uh, down these bile ducts and it goes into the gallbladder via the cystic duct. So the gallbladder is storing the bile, waiting for fat to emulsify. But as well as storing the bile, it also concentrates it. Then when there's fatty food in the duodenum, that's going to result in the contraction of the gallbladder. And it's going to go down into the, into the duodenum. Now, if we have a, a piece of fat in the duodenum, a fat globule, for example, what it's going to do, if that's a flat, flat fat globule, it's actually going to emulsify that and break that down into lots of little globules like this. So it doesn't digest the fat, it just, just breaks it down, it emulsifies the fat. So the fat becomes emulsified and that greatly increases the surface area. And then the uh, pancreatic lipase, the digestive enzyme can get at it much easier because it's got a much increased surface area. So it greatly increases the efficiency of the digestion of fats. And bile is a, an alkaline fluid because we actually need a, an alkaline environment in the duodenum to optimize the pH conditions for the pancreatic enzymes. And bile salts are important, as we've said, in the physical emulsification of fats in the digestive process. So this is a, a physical process, not a chemical process. Now, the main component in bile actually derives from red blood cells. So when red blood cells have finished their 120 days life or whatever it is, they're, they're, they're broken down, as we've said, largely in the spleen, but partly in the liver as well. So the red blood cells are are broken down and we get broken down red blood cells. Now the protein part is is reabsorbed and the protein is reused but when the haemoglobin molecules are broken down they're, they're not broken down completely and a yellow pigment called bilirubin is left over. So there's going to be bilirubin produced when these red cells are broken down and this bilirubin as we've said, a yellow pigment is going to go in the blood into the, uh, into the liver. And the liver cells will incorporate it into the bile. So this makes it fairly obvious now, if the liver is not working properly, and this bilirubin is not extracted from the blood, it's going to accumulate in the blood, causing jaundice. Or if the liver cells aren't working for some reason. Or alternatively, there could be an obstruction to the flow of bile. So a common cause is ca cancer of the head of the pancreas here, where there's obstruction to the bile duct here. And if there's obstruction to the bile duct, the bile can't get through, so it dams back. And eventually it will dam back into the blood, causing uh, quite severe jaundice and obstructive jaundice. 
as the bilirubin accumulates in the blood. Of course, I'm sure you've all seen bile because people vomit it back up sometimes. And it's green, not yellow. The reason it's green is that the, uh, the oxidised form is called biliverdin. So the bilirubin, when it's in the bile ducts, is oxidised and it becomes biliverdin. So bilirubin is the yellow, biliverdin is the, is the green colour. And as well as being useful to emulsify fats, the bile is also going to colour and uh, deodorise faeces. So again, in a, lot, in a, in a case of obst obstructive jaundice, if the bile is not getting through, then that which colours the faeces is not getting through either. And we can also um, get very pale coloured stools in that, in that condition. So we've seen three important functions already. It's a filter. The liver is a filter between the gut and the blood. It's going to uh, break down toxins and drugs and it's going to be uh, producing bile from leftover bilirubin from the breakdown of haemoglobin in red blood cells.